In this video, I wanted to talk about something that I personally feel is a big issue and possibly even the most important video that we would have done this year. This particular problem, in my opinion, exists in every single commercial office in Australia. I'm not exactly sure if the problem exists in other countries, but if you watch through the video and get the concept of what our problem is, you might find that you have similar sorts of problems in your country. If somewhere in your BMS design or your BMS function description, you have the following sentence, then it is highly likely that you have a life safety issue that the building management system is causing. Control of the systems in fire mode is achieved by hardwired control and interlock functions provided by the mechanical electrical subcontractor. The BMS will mimic the fire mode override controls to prevent nuisance alarms. So if anywhere in your BMS design you have anything that reads similar to the BMS will mimic the fire mode to prevent nuisance alarms, then it is highly likely that you have a significant problem. Most BMS companies correctly believe that the fire and smoke control system is dealt with completely by hardwired safety controls. So fire interface units or fire interface relays installed next to mechanical boards and then hardwired interlocking to achieve the fire matrix during a fire alarm. And they don't realize that when the BMS starts to mimic the fire mode for the purpose of preventing nuisance alarms, they don't realize that they are becoming an integral part of an operational fire and smoke control system. So this video is not only important to BMS engineers, it's important to anybody that is involved in the installation and design of a fire and smoke control system and the maintenance of that system who wants to have an operational fire and smoke control system during an actual fire alarm. Let's take a step back for those of you that are not BMS engineers and let's just touch on why we're mimicking the fire mode. So during an active fire alarm, lots of equipment that was running stops and equipment that wasn't running starts. And wherever the BMS detects a mismatch between the output to the fan or pump and its status, it generates a mismatch alarm. So when the fire alarm goes off, we get hundreds of alarms come flooding through the BMS, which can be quite confusing if you're trying to diagnose where the problem is. So a long time ago, somebody had an idea, a BMS person, why don't we mimic or copy the fire matrix? And the fire matrix is this humongous, super complicated spreadsheet that lists out all the different fire scenarios and then maps out exactly what happens. This stops, this starts, that stops, that starts, depending on where the fire alarm is, you know, smoke in duct detected, break glass, you know, sprinklers, whatever it is. So the plan was that when the fire alarm went off, wherever that zone was, the BMS would copy the hardwired safety strategy, in which case it would turn things off and turn things on, or sort of simulate it, in which case we wouldn't have these nuisance alarms. So the first minor issue, which is not the part of this video, is some poor software programmer has to sit there for 100 hours and replicate this whole thing. That's a secondary issue. But let me run through what the primary issue is and why the mimicking or copying of the fire matrix result in a life safety issue or situation. So we have our air handling unit, for example, and it gets installed three months earlier. You know, the BMS is quite early in there to start roughing in cables to dampers and actuators and temperature sensors and pressure sensors and all the, the equipment on the air handling unit. And what tends to happen is those three economy dampers on the air handling unit, the outside air damper, the return air damper and the spill damper, those zero to 10 volt DC analog outputs, 
those three get wired back to the BMS controller somewhere in the plant room with you know 10 or 15 other pieces of information that you're monitoring off that air handling unit. So when the fire alarm goes off, the hardwired safety circuits in the mechanical boards will turn the supply fan on and maybe set the speed of the supply fan and open up all sorts of other things. So when the BMS company mimics or copies the fire matrix, we also turn the fan on so there isn't a mismatch. And while the BMS programmers run that code and they're starting the AHU up, they're also going to set the dampers into full outside air mode. So they're going to open up the outside air damper and they're going to close the return air damper and probably open up the spill air damper because that's how we start the air handling unit. We can't start the air handling unit with those dampers closed. And what I think happens a lot of the time, except for when you have a very experienced BMS engineer that knows about this, but what should happen is technically in the perfect world, those three analog outputs for those three dampers, they should go from the BMS controller, they should go into the mechanical switchboard through a fire relay that drops the 24 volts AC power supply so that those three actuators spring into their fire mode. So if you did that, when the fire interface relay activated next to or inside the mechanical board, it would hardwired start the supply fan, it would drop the power to the three dampers and they would spring to the fully open mode. I don't think that happens a lot of the time because when we're designing our BMS system and running cables, usually the fire matrix isn't developed yet and the fire interface relays haven't been installed there yet. So the BMS is normally slightly ahead of mechanical and fire in the design and we start running our cables. No one told us, you know, the mechanical specification generally doesn't go into detail of telling you to sort those dampers out and the fire specification doesn't tell the fire contractor to be aware that these BMS control dampers also have to be operated in a, a life safety situation. All the smoke dampers and fire dampers with the red fire added cables, they're completely dealt with. Everyone's aware of them. But there's these BMS control damper actuators that is not on everyone's radar. So what happens is, because we mimicked the fire mode, when we test the fire alarm system as at the end of a new construction job for a 30-story commercial office, as we're approaching practical completion, when we test it, and everyone's there, all the consultants and the fire engineers, everyone's there, and we're testing the whole thing, and they activate the fire alarm, the whole thing works. The fans start up, and the dampers open. The whole thing works. But the dampers opened not through the fire system and the hardwired mechanical control system. The dampers opened because the BMS opened them, because the BMS was mimicking or copying the fire matrix. So we sign the job off, we all do high fives, we all get paid. And for the next 10 years, every single year, the facility manager or the building owner does their full function fire test and the system works. They set a Saturday, they're gonna do it, they do the test, they hit the brake glass, wherever it is, the fans start, all the dampers go to the right place, the whole thing works for 10 years, every year it works. On the 11th year, there's actually a fire. And let me just pause for a second. Where is the fire panel normally installed? The fire panel is normally installed on the ground floor where the fireman can come smashing through the doors with his big axe when there's, there's problems and start operating and overriding the smoke control system. Remember, my opinion and understanding is that more people die from smoke than actual burning fires in buildings. So if the fire panel is on the ground floor, it's likely the BMS interface to the fire panel is also on the ground floor right there. So if the fire is anywhere above the ground floor or on the ground floor, which it's gonna be there, we're gonna burn through BMS network switches, BMS network controllers, BMS network cables, and those fire signals are not gonna to get to level 30 in that high-rise plant room where we have our six big variable volume AHUs that have to start up to pressurize the non-fire zones. Um, so, and sometimes I describe this as 
the fire and smoke control system works provided there isn't a fire. Like it's a bit, it's a bit annoying that I say that sometimes, but it, that's what it is. Because if there is actually a real fire and we burn through some BMS cables or there's a power supply problems, which there 100% will be, what's going to happen is the AHU supply fans, they're going to start because that's all protected. Those red fire networks are protected in fire risers um, and fire cables. Those fans will start. But if the fire happened on a very hot day or a very cold day, which means we weren't in economy mode, we were in full return air mode with just minimum outside air coming in. If we were in that situation or that mode, when the fire alarm went off, those dampers are going to stay in full return air mode, which means that we're going to just suck back and recirculate smoke back into the building because the outside air damper isn't fully open. So very experienced BMS engineers are aware of this, so they coordinate that there needs to be a fire relay in the mechanical board for these dampers, and they plan that out. And we call them damper control panels sometimes. But if you're a younger BMS engineer, you know, you've, done, you've got two or three years experience, it's highly likely that you're going to forget about this or not be aware of it because it's not well specified. So I reckon if we went into the city right now, it's a thousand buildings, and we checked a thousand buildings, I bet you 200 buildings, just guessing, won't properly work in fire mode because we haven't realized that by mimicking the fire alarm system, this is happening. Now, the second quick example I want to give you is this. Um, let's say during commissioning mode, <coughs> during commissioning, and um, the mechanical air balancing engineers are you know, doing the air balancing thing, and they want to start up all these fans, um, you know, taut exhaust fans and outside air fans or whatever they are, and they go to the mechanical board and the fans don't start because the fire system isn't completely installed and programmed yet. Like, what do they do? Two things. They either get a short piece of wire and they bridge out the fire signal in the mechanical board to get everything started, or on the relays, actually, on the relays, That little orange thing, if you lift that little if you lift that little flag up, it overrides the relay. So often during commissioning, when you open up the mechanical boards, you'll see the three or four fire relays mechanically overridden so that we can get the plant up and running for commissioning. It's not that unlikely that someone forgets to release those mechanical little overrides or pull those wires out. So the point I'm making here is when you're doing the fire alarm test approaching practical completion and the fire alarm goes off, those two outside air fans get turned off because the BMS is mimicking the fire mode and the BMS turns them off. But the actual fire interface, it didn't turn them off because the wire was shorted out and it was bridged out or the relays were mechanically overridden. So the second situation there is where we haven't done something wrong by having, you know, economy dampers that are just, you know, opening under fire alarm conditions. We're in a situation here where over either in construction or by solving a problem during maintenance where there's an issue with the fire alarm system and somebody overrides something, we're in a situation now again where every year for 10 years as we test the fire alarm system, we do our full function fire test every year for the next 10 years, the two outside air fans, they turn off because the BMS is turning them off, we're mimicking the fire mode. So what it means is when the fire alarm goes off and the BMS doesn't work because there actually is a fire and we burnt through some of our cables, all of a sudden in year 11, those two outside air fans that are sucking fresh air in to feed the fire, they don't turn off because the BMS isn't working and the fire alarm system has been disabled by these little overrides in the panels. The same for the toilet exhaust fans. They might continue to run because the BMS didn't work. So do you see how mimicking the fire mode, it's dramatic. Like, it's highly likely to cause a problem. And this is the way I like to think about it. When the BMS mimics the fire alarm, it masks or hides 
issues in the fire system or the mechanical's hardwired interlock system. Any bugger ups in the design, through commissioning and through maintenance, those mistakes are masked because the BMS is covering your ass. If the BMS was not mimicking the fire mode, things wouldn't work. We'd do our fire test a week before practical completion and the fans would start on the air hand units and the dampers wouldn't open. It'd be like, oh, the dampers didn't open. Oh, we forgot to interlock the 24 volt power supply for all the BMS economy dampers. Let's go fix that. Or when you're doing your full function fire test every year and in year seven, the outside air fans don't turn off. Ah, oh, somebody's gone and flagged the relay. Someone's done something. So when things break down or go wrong with the fire system, you will find them through your, you know, your essential services maintenance activities if the BMS isn't masking those problems. So just to finish this off, how I think you fix this is really easy. All you do is this. Wherever you have a fire piece of equipment, you know, a pump or a fan that has to do something in, in fire mode, so like the boiler pumps might shut down, for that mismatch alarm, um, you, you just have a point that comes in that says when the fire alarm goes off, inhibit these alarms. So when the fire alarm goes off, there's 30 or 40 pieces of equipment that we know is either going to start or stop. The BMS inhibits or suppresses those alarms because they're going to be nuisance alarms. Don't suppress all the alarms. If the generator fails to start under that power fail condition, like we want to know about that. If the sump pumps fail or something happens, we want to know about that. So, and how easy is that? You're a software programmer. All you've got to do is have one interlock point that inhibits or suppresses the alarms for certain pieces of equipment during the fire alarm. So A, our job is much easier not to mimic the fire alarm system, and B, we're going to save a lot of potential life safety issues. That's probably enough of that. So if you're a BMS company and you're doing service, have a little bit of a look at this. If you're a mechanic consultant, mechanical contractor, a fire engineer, if you're a building owner or a facility manager, because remember, ultimately, if you're the building owner, you have some responsibility in providing a fit for purpose life safety system. Do you know that if, um, if someone dies in this building because we're recircling the smoke and they die from smoke inhalation and you're the BMS company, you're sitting at, in court, you can't, like you, maybe you can't say, yeah, but you know, it's a life safety system. Like at the end of the day, your system was mimicking the fire alarm system and it's not really your fault. Okay. There's a, there's a bigger piece to play here, but all of us, in the BMS company, we are also slightly potentially liable. When the building owner is sitting in court and telling the judge why they had a system that people died in, um, and as an investigation, you know, we're all up for this to a certain extent. So this is the big problem. This isn't, let's save some energy and improve our building's energy efficiency rating. This is not, let's have nicer graphics that is more usable, you know, more interactive, you know, alarms and trends, energy management systems, visualization, which I think is the last few videos. We're talking about a BMS software programmer tapping on a keyboard and writing code that possibly is creating a life safety situation. I'll leave you with that.